Hello, hello my friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space and another Halloween video. I wanted to use these Picket Fence Studios Halloween Jubilee uh, Fabulous Foiling Toner Card Fronts again. I've already done a video, the spider video. It'll be in my Halloween playlist that'll be linked at the end of this video. And I talked about them, made a couple cards, etc. And I was like... I need to use them again. So I used them with some deco foil because I wanted a specific color. And I also combined it with this uh, So Franken Cute <laughs> stamp set from Picket Fence that I got. I bought this last year, I think. It's still available, but I can't remember if I bought it last year or the year before. Meant to use it, never had a chance. I used one of the sentiments in this year's series in one of the cards and yeah he's been he's been sitting here staring at me and I was like I need to use him because I like him so I made a couple of foiled flat shaker cards with him I also used my spectrum noir tri blends very simple coloring etc and that's about it for the, for the intro I'll have links at the end um, I'll also have links in the little upper, the when the little eye pops up, because I have a flat shaker playlist, I have a Spectrum Noir Tri Blend playlist, and then I've got my Halloween 2023 series playlist. Many playlists. We were talking about that in my most recent live video. That's what I do to keep things somewhat organized. Yeah. <laughs> so anywho, keep watching, and I'll show you how I made these cards. So I started off with some of uh, Simon Says Stamps Smooth White 120 pound cardstock and put it in my Misty. And then I am gonna ink up this dude with Simon's Intense Black Ink and I am going to have to ink up and stamp him multiple times because there's a lot of solid area on this and my ink pad is old. <laughs> I just, I refuse to, I'm not even sure if I've got a reinker for it or I probably have like, I'm, I'm positive. I have a backup of a brand new ink pad, but yeah, I, it's just habit. Just restamp it, get all the, all the areas stamped and it's good to go. So, and I did this twice because I was like, why not? You know, why not do two? So once I had them stamped, I am using my Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers to color these in. I have a playlist that I have done with I'm not sure how many videos so far using these. I like them. I have been enjoying them since I bought them. I forget how many months ago now. And they're great. Do they compare to Copics? Not really. Um, but I just enjoy them. And up until probably this specific video. I just use them as is. I think that's the thing I like the most about them. It's like you grab one marker and you have three shades because there's a dark, a medium, a light. And I'm like, perfect. The less thinking I have to do about it, the better. But with these dudes, I mixed two markers. So I used, I started with like the light green blend, but then I went in with the citrus green blend and I, I really liked how this turned out. Like I was just coloring on the fly and I was like, what will happen? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so I didn't do blending in the sense of like really trying to, you know, blend out the lines like we normally do with alcohol markers and you know, get that smooth blend. I wasn't aiming for that with here. I was literally slapping on color. I know I mentioned that a lot. It's like, I just slap it on. I just slap on some color, whatever. Um, That's what I did this time. Legit. Like, did not worry about it blending. I, I liked it. I liked that you could see the brush strokes and the, the you know, different streaks of different shades of green. It just kind of added to him because, again, one, Halloween card. And two, I was also following the the line art. I've, I've mentioned this in videos. I really like that with a lot of um, stamp designs. You know, they, they'll have a lot of line art on them that show, like, in this case, you know, all the texture of his skin and, and the wrinkles and all the things. And then with other things, it's like, oh, there's a bunch of line art to show where the shading is, the darker areas, et cetera, et cetera. So I just, I follow that and it makes it so much easier. So that's what I did. I kept the darker colors kind of towards all the lines and then just went from there. And 
yeah, just slapped on all these different shades of green and it just created this cool sort of look for him. So after I did all of that, I took um, is it the ice, the ice gray blend. Yes. And I used just the medium shade and the lightest shade to kind of fill in um, the highlight areas of his hair, which you could just leave white. But then of course, all the bolts, then the side of his neck and those like staples in his forehead. And then my last little random thing was to add purple to his eyes. I wasn't going to and then but I was like, it just needed something. And in the end, I'm actually glad I did because I one of the shaker mixes I pulled out is purple. And so then I just went with it. I just went with it. So once I was done coloring these, I fussy cut these out just using my little cutter B, my little cutter B scissors. This is one of the simplest images to fussy cut, really. You know, it, it yeah, there isn't a die set for this anyway, but this was super easy to trim out. So I trimmed out and the only other thing I would do differently and I was going to do it because I always show when I do this type of fussy cutting is I go around the edges with like a black marker. I was going to do it and then I completely forgot until everything was adhered and I was like that was what I was going to do but in the end it's it's pretty minor. There's enough distraction going on with the foil and all the fun things. So foil. I'm using like I mentioned in the intro the the um, Halloween um Fabulous foiling toner card fronts. I really like these ones with the skulls. And Picket Fence doesn't have a green toner foil like with their brand yet. But I went through my stash because of course I've got an entire basket just full of deco foil because it's shiny and pretty and I'm a magpie and I like to purchase it and then not use it. So I don't even remember when I bought, I bought this is some Brutus Monroe green sketch deco foil. And it's got like all these like lines in it which is really fun because that shows up on the finished um front card fronts so I just used copy paper fold it in half and then realized I had to trim it down a little bit to fit through my little mini mink machine here and you just put the foil with the backside facing the design and it doesn't matter whether it's um one way or the other when you run it through the, the machine. I thought I had filmed both and I didn't have the camera filming for the second one. But you put the foil on top. I put it in my little copy paper carrier sheet there, ran it through and it foiled this background. And it's just shiny and textural and oh, satisfying. Just satisfying. So I did that with both backgrounds and I saved the leftover piece. That's the big thing with the picket fence ones is you can use those on the other foiling sheets. Like there's great big eight and a half by 11 ones with patterns on them and all sorts of things. I didn't do that for this video, obviously, but I saved the what I peeled off from foiling those backgrounds. I have it sitting right here. I'm just going to keep it with the package. And then, yeah, next time I pull this out, it's like, ooh, I've got these like funky green skulls leftover piece that I can like foil you know so after I did all that I trimmed those backgrounds down to just slightly smaller I could have left them a2 size and it'd just be a full edge to edge shaker but I wanted to trim it down because then I can mat this and I'll get to that like in a minute and then I'm turning them into flat shakers so I trimmed down um, some of the picket fence shaker sheets I've also used like recycled packaging same thing I got a basket full of that stuff I just save it and I use it for flat shaker cards and I've done tons of them tons of them over the last couple of years so I just flipped the card fronts over onto those um, trim down shaker sheets and I'm just using some Simon Says Stamp Terrific Tape. Score tape works the exact same way people have been asking me. They work the exact same way. Just I like something like a good strong adhesive either this or you could do red line tape. Uh, red line is just a little more is a bit stronger and a little more finicky to work with so that's usually why I just go with the Terrific Tape or Score Tape to do these. And you saw me there, I just sealed up three sides, left the fourth side open so I could add the shaker bits. And these are the I'm Alive embellishments. <laughs> oh, I got a kick out of that. I was like, the one, the name of them, just it's meant to be. But if you look closely, there's actual little like, <laughs> little clay bits with like coffins and um, vampires, you know, like I just... This is a fun little shaker mix. I got a kick out of it and yeah, dumped a whole bunch into both of these. Still got tons left. You get a ton in these containers. Anyway, filled them up, 
sealed up the fourth side. And then I trim off the little corner bits that are kind of hanging off from folding up all that acetate. I just trim that off with my scissors. And then I pulled out some purple cardstock from my stash and put it in my Misty. And I'm using my anti-static powder tool. And I'm going to stamp one of the sentiments from this um, So Frank and Cute stamp set. And I'm going to stamp it with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. And I'm going to use black embossing powder. I've done this a couple times in recent uh, days, couple last couple weeks, whatever it's been. Uh, n all, up until recently, I would always just stamp it and then emboss it with clear. You don't need to heat emboss it at all. You just would need to let it um, dry or to heat set it because VersaFine Clear ink takes a while to dry and I always smear it. Always. So that's why I heat emboss it. And you can use clear, but I have been slowly getting back into using black embossing powder and I like it. It's just, it's more crisp. It's just because it's like as black as it can be, you know? But again, you can totally skip it, use clear, or just not heat emboss it at all. You just got to have a little more patience and let it dry. And I don't have patience and I'm clumsy, so I heat emboss. <laughs> so after I heat emboss the sentiments, I trim them down to be just the size of the sentiment itself. And then the shaker panels... I put score tape on the back. I could use that same terrific tape. I just, I have all the sizes of score tape just because don't, I don't even know why I have them all. I just do. And so this is just faster and more convenient. So I put score tape on the back of this because this will adhere it securely either to my card base or in this case, I'm, I cut panels to slightly larger. So these shaker panels were four inches by five and a quarter. So I trimmed the same purple cardstock to like four and an eighth by five and three eighths, basically, just to give it a little bit of a frame around um, the shaker panel. Plus it pulls in just a tiny bit more of that purple because I was like, well, it's obviously just going to be purple again, you know? So peeled off the backing of the score tape, popped those panels into place. And then to adhere my little monsters, I used score tape again, just a good strong adhesive. I either like to use like a foam adhesive, like Simon's Big Mama foam tape, which is what I'm going to use for the sentiments, or foam squares, or a good strong adhesive like this, or th times I've also shown like running things through my little like Xyron machine to apply adhesive. Um, that's my preferred way to adhere on top of things like plastic, acetate, etc. Because it just sticks better. Liquid glue works. I use that when I need to. Mostly for like die cut sentiments, that sort of a thing. But liquid adhesive, if I can avoid using it on top of acetate, it's just a good thing. Because again, I'm clumsy. That's, that's literally the reason for everything. <laughs> So adhered those guys to the fronts of the shakers. And then, yeah, the sentiments, I just popped a little bit of Simon's Big Mama foam tape. So it'll give them a barely, really in the end, hardly any lift, like noticeably, but it just adheres it nicely, like right along the bottoms of these card fronts. So adhered those little bits into place. And then for my card bases, they're just going to be top folding A2 white note cards. So four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to put those back in my Misty and I'm going to stamp him with just a light green ink. So I pulled out Simon's Celery Positively Saturated Ink, which is quite bright, but it's just fun, you know? And like I always say, when I do things like this where I'm stamping like a large image on the inside of my card, that is with the intention that I will write right over it. That's also why I went with like just a light bright ink and not something really deep or dark or stamping it in black. I want to be able to write over this, you know, with a ballpoint pen and not have it um, like you, th that what I write is legible. Hence also putting the sentiment like towards the bottom one because it just kind of mirrors the outside of the card, but also gives more space to write. And I didn't want to cover up his face with the stamped sentiment. I have no problem like writing over it. You know what I mean? So stamp the sentiment with amethyst ink. So just a nice, a nice purple you know, because that's what this turned into was just something with purple again, because that's just been my mood lately. <laughs> so once I've got those um, stamped to adhere the uh, card fronts, I just used craft tacky glue and got those put into place. 
And once those are adhered, my final little bit, I wasn't going to add any more like embellishments or anything because like I've got foiling and flat shakers and all that going on. But I just wanted to add that that little, little extra something. It's subtle, but it's there. So I used one of my Nouveau Aqua Shimmer pens and I painted that over the like the little staples in his forehead, uh, the bolts on his neck, and then also the little purple area that I colored for his eyes. And again, it's subtle. You can see it more in real life. And I will show with my flashlight at the end. There's just that little bit of sparkle, you know, because why not? He's got such a grouchy look on his face, but he's sparkly too. So, so it just works. <laughs> and I actually did like I painted two coats of this again, super subtle. But you guys, if, if you've watched my videos for a long time, you guys know I've been using the Aquashima pens for years and they're one of my favorite ways. It it's one of those things, that especially on, in, on camera, like on video, it looks like literal nothing. But in real life and when the light hits it and when I show with my flashlight, it's just sparkly, super sparkly. So painted that on, added an extra little coat of it because you can never go wrong with a little bit of sparkle. And that finished off these cards. So we've got this like crazy foiled background, flat shaker, his little sparkly bits, you know, it's just super, super fun. And yeah, the, the sequin shakers are just adorable. Absolutely adorable. And yeah, can't go wrong with shakers. They're always the funnest. So got those done insides like so. And that finished off these cards. So like I mentioned in the intro, I will have um, links to playlists at the end of this video. They were also up in like the eye in the corner of the video during the video. I will have a link below the video to my blog post with pictures, supply lists, etc, etc. So you can check that all out below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching, commenting, thumbs upping, subscribe if you haven't, I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.